So, I recently went to my local AI collaboration event that was centered on game development. You know, just to stay up to date on what's going on in the field, and today I just wanted to show you what they showed me, which blew my mind, and uh, maybe it'll blow yours. I learned how to do this from Bill Din, he was the speaker that day, and here is what he showed everybody how to do. Feel free to follow along, because like I said in the title, there are no tricks. You can replicate what I'm doing right now on your own computer. So, as of last week, Grok made an update to its new preview feature, which allows it to show you things that you're trying to create in HTML. So if you tell it, as a professional game developer, create the uh, Brick Breaker game in HTML so I can play it. Press enter, give it a few minutes, and it will generate the HTML code for you and give you a preview of the game that you can literally play. It looks like it gave us basic left and right arrow key controls. I wonder if we can move with the mouse. We can. Okay, we got mouse controls and everything. Look at that. So here's the cool part. Now that we have this basic code, we can actually copy this HTML code and dump it into any app creation website like Replit, then just paste the code in and host it on a server and then other people can play it. That's actually what they demonstrated when I was at the meeting. I literally saw them copy and paste the code into the Replit website and I was able to play the game on my phone. Now, it doesn't stop here. The cool part is actually, once you got the base game, we can actually iterate on it. For example, let's say we wanted to change the color of the ball to green. We just go back into Grok and say, hey, adjust the game so that the ball is green. And bam, the change is now in the game. If you are working on a space shooter game, then you can tell Grok to draft out the base and it will give you a template that you can again adjust and augment till it looks and plays the way you want. Now I tried to get it to do some wild things. So one of the things I asked it to do was create a Pokemon style RPG battle phase game. You know, like the good old Game Boy days. And it kind of almost almost did it. Now I didn't specifically ask for anything in particular, but it gave us Pikachu versus Charmander. We got two attacks we can choose from, Thundershock and a quick attack, and yeah, the damage is being calculated, we took damage, and we fainted. Look at that. The next thing that I tried to make was a top-down shooter where you left click to fire and you use WASD to move and gave me this. And yep, we can left click to fire, we can move with WAST, but I wanted the shape of the projectile to be a little bit more bullet-like. So I asked Grok to make it more like a line and I wanted it to travel faster. And then I asked it to make a little hit effect when the bullet hits the target. And bam, every single one of my changes was made. Then I noticed that the collision system for the bullets is a little bit off, so I told it to fix that, and I also wanted to be able to hold down the left mouse button to fire like a machine gun. Run the game again, and bam, the collisions are better, and now I have my automatic machine gun fire. And just to add another layer of coolness to it, I asked Grok to give me a second weapon that fires once every second at the closest enemy automatically. And if you look at that, it added a blue projectile that fires every second at the closest enemy automatically without me aiming. And I gotta say, that change made the game a lot funner, and I was actually trying to get a high score for a while. It was really cool. Here's my conclusion. While it's not perfect, this is the stage we're at right now when it comes to drafting games. If you have an idea for something, you can literally throw it into Grok and see if you like it. And if you do, keep iterating it and changing and updating it until you're happy. Then when you are, you can just finally copy and paste the code into a site like Replit or wherever you want to host it so your friends can play and then, you know, have fun. I think the biggest use case for this is honestly when it comes to prototyping ideas. You know, like if you want to, say, play chess, but you want to see how the game feels when you can move every piece twice instead of once. Or you maybe want to double the size of the board. Well, that kind of stuff you can experiment in with Grok really easily until you find something that you're happy with. And it'll actually make a nice looking board too. It might be a little janky and sometimes Grok will try and cheat you and start you with less pieces than itself, but otherwise it's still pretty cool and I think this is going to drastically change the field of prototyping games in the future. And remember, this is the start. Everything I just showed you is the worst and slowest that it's ever going to be. It's only going to get smarter and faster from here, so go ahead and start playing with it. I've had a lot of fun messing with it so far, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one with cool ideas, so yeah, have at it. Regardless, hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.